bit, and this win can mean so much uh, for the Tigers as they are 1-2 in record right now. But getting a win against the top two in Korea would be sweet. And the Victor Band coming in yet again for CJ Entis while they're on blue side. Yeah, so uh, they probably just repeat the same bands they had last time. Victor Evan Lin the blog, CJ once again taking the blue side of the map here, and there is Callista. We'll see if the Tigers want to vary up their strategy just a little bit. Sivir Sejuani taken out previously. I think those are good bands against CJ still. I don't know if you necessarily have to worry about that, but instead they're not going to let Mad Life have Alistair, longtime signature champion for yeah. Mad Life. We didn't even mention that in the last game, but with how much Thresh Mad Life's been playing, it's been weird that Mad Life in an Alistair meta has not been playing more Alistair. Yeah. So it's been, it was a pleasure to see that again. Yeah, I mean, Alistair is so popular right now, and I think the Tiger is realizing that, you know what, CJ first picked it just like we did. Uh, we shouldn't give it up. I think they maybe thought that because Mad Life hasn't been playing as much, they would get it in their first rotation. Didn't happen, though. The Gragas Band now coming out and really targeting Wisdom with that one. They saw, you know, the one good game he had was with Gragas, so yeah. putting that down. I was very impressed with his ability to gank with Gragas. And I think they're just concerned about losing out in the laning phase if he's able to get some of those potent ganks off. And now, <laughs> I feel like Silver... Silver's face is like, really? You're gonna, you're gonna ban Wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> and oh oh uh interesting uh, they want to huh. take rex i i guess so now does cj purposely take rex i away uh, i think ambition has been favoring other things i mean at the same time if he gets new new i don't think he's too concerned he did such a good job of warding up the jungle and yeah. controlling hojin in, in the early game i think that your Sivir's available now. We know that this is such a, such a strong pick for the CJ Entis team. You have the option to first pick it right here. You don't really need the Sejuani, honestly. Yeah. Um, i just put this in Space's hands and play around that. Although, although wait, if you, I'm still confused. Because if you want to pick Rexa, you, I don't feel the Evelyn ban is as necessary. If you want an early game jungler with a lot of aggression, that's I guess one so. of the last ones left. But Ambition can play that Lee Sin, of course. It just doesn't right. scale as well. But regardless, it will be Sejuani for Wisdom, surprisingly. Okay. Uh-oh. The Ziggs. Coco also loves his Ziggs in that mid lane. Now, Rex Light, that means it is available. Uh, Lee Sin is also available. And of course, that Nunu as always, but... No, I think you play Rek'Sai here with the Zivir really focus on pressing and pressing your power in the mid game. And then Coco, he's gonna have to blind pick a mid laner here anyway. Maokai, it's all in. Heavy engage composition if they go with that pickup. Oh, possibly picking up. Yeah, Thresh, I think, would be fine. I mean, Mad Life has been picking that up. They might want a little bit more idea from the Tigers. The top lane is already de determined with that Rumble. And so the Thresh going to be locked in uh, for Mad Life. Oh, and Lee Sin coming out for Ooh. Ambition. Okay. So this really did work out very well for them the last time they played it. Ambition even building the Warrior Enchant, which I agree with. I, I think if you're yeah. going to go Lee Sin, you go Lee Sin. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can't, you can't halfway with a Lee Sin. That's how you lose games. <laughs> And Cinder Hulk, Lee said, is just such garbage. So uh, I like it. Just all in with that champion in terms of your item build. And they see the Rumble. They see the Sejuani. Uh, they've got an immobile top laner right here. They can punish it with a Maokai. They can punish it potentially with a Gnar as well. And there is the Azir once more for Kurel Prey going back to the Corky. Yeah, so with the Rumble in the top lane, do we see the Maokai again? for Shy, I mean, it is, again, very heavy match damage, and even with Sejuani, even more match damage, uh, just like it was the time before. I think Maokai's a fantastic pick here. You have kill pressure in top against Meb's Rumble if he decides to press forward. Uh, you have it with Gnar as well, yeah. and you have a matchup that you can harass very heavily with the Hex Drinker. Either one's going to be fine. As for the mid lane, um, Cassiopeia, great option here. Right, it'd be, it'd be just like a standard meta team for CJ at that point, except for, I guess, the Lee Sid, but you can work around that. So does the Cassiopeia come over for Coco, or does he have something else up his sleeves? No, it looks like it'll just be Cassiopeia and Maokai, two very stable champions. Maokai, of course, has played a ton of Maokai in the past, so this means, I mean, a lot, also, a lot relies on space, as always, but also on ambition with that Lee Sid. 
The rest uh, should just be able to kind of even out wherever they are. Annie would be really ambitious here. I feel uh, that's a that's a lot of commitment to engage against a spell shield. Nautilus will be a much safer pick. Uh, and also be able to target down this Cassiopeia, which yeah. is really nice, because she has to come in range of depth charge if she wants to deal any damage most of the time. Yeah, so the Annie would have had the same thing to Cassiopeia, but the laning phase would have been difficult, so the Nautilus trying to well, even that out. It's also that you can't really cleanse the depth charge, whereas oh, the problem well, yeah, is, is that true. if you pick Annie, it's very easy for Cassiopeia just to ignore everything that Annie just did with her, shake it off with a cleanse, and then you're dealing with a, a spell shield on the Sivir too. So it's, yeah. Not you know, great. I can proudly say a couple days ago when I was playing Lee that I walked into my teammates with Death's Charge on me, got the enemy team a four-man knock-up, and I was laughing my head off. <laughs> I was like, I cannot believe I did that. That is hilarious. We lost this game. <laughs> but well it was done, fun times. <laughs> Chobra confirmed toxic troll. Will walk into his own teammates with Death's Charge on. You can, you can report me for unskilled player, but that's it. <laughs> But here we do have the final picks. Game number three, the last game between these two teams. And then we still have a fun match to look forward to from Jin Air Green Wings going up against uh, Spenu Sonic Boo. But can CJ come back for the 2 over reverse sweep again? Or will the Koo Tigers get a long time, you know, long awaited win here halfway through the season? Let's find out as the game loads in. Ambition on that Lee Sin. He's been showing us some good moments on Lee Sin, although most other people have been still shying away from that, going for more common priority picks. See if we can get that early lead in game number three as we jump into the final set. <laughs> the Koopans are always so confused. <laughs> they're, they're not really used to this whole organized thing. <laughs> Half of them are still saying GE. Yeah. <laughs> Half of them are still saying Get it Nodgen. together. <laughs> yeah, Half of them are still saying Nodgen. Get it together, Koop fans. <laughs> well, going to be just a quiet start. Looks like standard lanes for everyone. Not too surprising there for both sides. And also, you know, a lot of eyes on Wisdom. Again, he hasn't been playing every game. They've been swapping back and forth. And so you still have to say that it's uh, pretty early. He's only played four sets so far since he returned to the professional scene. How will he do on the Sejuani? Well, regardless of what happens in this third game, the Koo Tigers have played much better tonight than they yes. have at any other time so far this season. Struggling, losing that set against Najin, and then getting pretty much destroyed by SK Telecom. And what a hard week for them, too, having to play SKT and CJ. Yeah. That's really oh, brutal man. in terms of preparation. Yeah, two undefeated teams. Now, Koo Tigers have a chance, I mean, to take down CJ, the number two team right now in the league, and to get themselves up in some better positioning as we go forward. And Mad Life this time just saying, you know what, Ambition? <laughs> What, did Ambition, Ambition didn't take SKT, He did took he? the Muay Thai lease oh, in. That is so been, disappointing, we, isn't we it? We could have had actually the full tour. It could oh, have man. actually happened. Damn you, Ambition. <laughs> we had a story going and you ruined it. Oh, well. That's what you get, Trevor, for not talking to him during the break and being... <laughs> that is what I should have done. Setting him straight. Uh, well, we actually do end up seeing that lane swap happen, so we're going to see Mad Life go back. Yeah, usually a lot of Korea players don't like to play Corky into Sivir in the laning phase. That's true. So that's going to prompt the lane swap from the Koo Tigers, and they will get the freeze. Gorilla just having a little look in the enemy jungle, seeing if they are being silly and weak side jungling right there. They are not this time around, and that is a smart plan because Nautilus is probably the best at messing you up if you're yeah. juggling on the weak side during a lane swap. Just his level one is very strong even in that 1v2 because he's so tanky and he just spams Reptide on you and stuns you both. It's very annoying. Yeah, well Kuro meanwhile something went a little wrong in the first level here in the mid lane but he's back in with that biscuit putting down a sand soldiers to farm. Coco just looking for some more harassment. Coco getting a lot of hits on that Q is going to mean his passive stacks up just fine as we head into the later teens in terms of time. Yeah, so they did see Ambition through the jungle. Gorilla got a deep ward in to track Lee Sin's progress, so they have a 
A nice idea of where he is right now. Ambition actually going to pop over. No, oh, this is going to start harassing the red buff. Red buff, right. red buff, yeah, the red, red buff. buff is going in. Ambition goes in, and Wisdom's so low, and there's first blood. Oh, it's, you know, one of the few times that our observer <laughs> is completely unaware of what's going on in the game. Our, our observers are quite fantastic, but so we have these rare moments. <laughs> Ambition dropped his uh, trinket ward over the back of the pit, W to it, and then messed up Wisdom. And this is okay. So let's take a look at this. I Ambition mean, this is just, just straight up. Hey, what's up? And there's a follow through. <laughs> I mean, you can't even flash away from that. So, if there, if there are people, if there are those among you who wonder, who have questions like, why wasn't Sejuani played previously? That's your answer right there, because that's what you can do with Lee Sin. This is why Cinder Hulk was very critical in buffing these junglers. So, there's a smaller timing window that you can do it now than there was. Right. Um, uh, and the new changes to the jungle, things like Romp as well. The AOE damage or the damage return from attacking that some of these junglers give you. Coco wow. taking Kuro down pretty far right there. So now you can continue to clear the jungle without getting low throughout your entire time pretty much, except for maybe that first clear where Wisdom was playing it a little fast and loose as well. Uh, but yeah, you I used to be able to do that a lot longer in the game is the yes. point that I'm kind of failing to make right now. <laughs> and that meant that Lee Sin could repeatedly invade you. Like and here we go. Oh, barely dashes out of that one. And I think, you know, Wisdom also... I don't even know why Wisdom's on his side of the jungle right now. This is... He does... Yeah. He does not want to be on his weak side. Yeah, right now it seems a, a little bit of a poor choice. I mean, earlier going straight to the red and just kind of playing that without thinking too much, I think, because he was on the strong side, because he had the duel. But, of course, Ambition wasn't seen. He didn't ward that brush before he started things well, off. It was also sloppy play by Koo because they knew where Ambition was. Yeah. They had seen him walking to his blue buff, and you have to respect the fact that he can come over and just rock your socks. But great play from Ambition. Uh, Ambition's still going at it, and this time it's going to be Gorilla who's taking a lot of damage, and that means Wisdom has to pull off from the Wolf. He's just going to continue doing it as Gorilla takes a lot of damage. Finally, we're going to have Smep show up for some backup. Wisdom does get some CS. Probably a call there from Gorilla saying, hey, you know, it's cool. You really need that farm. I'll get Smep to come help me out, and the Koo Tigers do get out safely. Yeah, got a smite charge out of that as well, so at least he prevented Wisdom from losing any more of his farming time in that yeah. side. So that's actually kind of a win right there for the Tigers as they're able to propel Wisdom back into this game and even get him a CS lead. A lot of time used by Ambition and Mad Life in the enemy jungle for not a lot of reward. Coco convincingly dominating this mid lane, though, coming out with a six minute, about 15 CS advantage after this wave. He's doing very fine. He's been harassing just well. He has that tier now. He's been stacking his passive quite consistently. And that's going to matter a lot for Wisdom, too, especially if, you know, as he is always pushed up in the mid lane, you're going to feel a little bit unsafe. And, you know, we see this a lot, especially with new junglers. Not necessarily new players in other positions, but you target them so much because if they go even slightly on tilt, so the whole game's balance kind of tilts in your favor. Oh, you do that in solo queue, too. Right. Yeah, you, I mean, you find the weakest link, and you're just like, I am just going to gank you all day, every day. And a lot of times it's the jungler, because not many people main jungle. Well, also, it's just uh, people react so slowly in solo queue to yes. your invasions. Your lanes won't move, so it be a good way to torture someone. Aggression is key. We're just going to see Coco get that first stack from his passive at 100 stacks of poison. And he's just going to challenge Kuro to a little bit of a duel. But his Twin Fangs goes onto the minion. He's like, all right, I'll just farm instead. Ambition just roaming about. Both jungles showing, showing himself in the mid lane, actually, intentionally as he goes down to the bottom side. So yeah. making a beeline towards his red buff. First buff of the game, Kuro is going to grab his blue in response. So just trying not to tally too much on that buff. but. Not really keeping himself very invisible at that time. And that's going to let Smeb just push forward freely right here. Yeah. Pretty important to stay unseen as a jungler, even if it's going to save you a couple seconds to cut across the mid lane like that. The mind games are so important. Yeah, meanwhile, a uh, deep ward from the Koo Tigers right across the Dragon Pit, so they'll know if CJ just tries anything kind of sneaky. Also, quite a few dragons right in the river there, too. but. And Mission just walks all the way through from the side. It's not going to matter. He's going to walk right over that ward so the Tigers can have even more vision of that Lee Sin. Meanwhile, Shy 
I mean, this is kind of the rough spot of Maokai in lane. If your jungler doesn't show up, uh, the Rumble can really do a lot of damage to you early. Yeah, if you can play without respect as Rumble, you're in an extremely good position. And they're going to try and solo this dragon, but there's a ward at the back. It has been seen. This has definitely yeah. been noticed. They're walking towards it right now. And they saw that the bottom lane was missing from the Koo Tigers, but Ambition is all Ambition alone Ambition has no here. ward for a ward hop either. Yeah, they're just going to land for a bad life. There's the Lantern. He's going to have to back off. But again, because CJ Entis is actually trying so hard to take advantage of Wisdom, they're spending a lot of time in allowing Wisdom to just do what he, as he wishes after that first disadvantage. He's going to go ahead and try to steal the enemy blue. He's going to get it. There's nothing they can yeah. do at this point. That dragon take, very bold, especially given the dragon buffs in 5.9, the patch that we're on right now. And that is going to be no blue buff for Coco's Cassiopeia, delaying the, of course, stacking of that tier as well. And uh, they knew that he started red buff. They had Ambition's timer from seeing him walk across the mid lane earlier. And so they go for the blue buff right when it comes up. Coco doesn't realize it's not there yet. Oh, oh sad day for good, the snake lady. Good play from Wisdom, though. Yeah, I mean, he's all back in the game just fine. The er first blood not going to matter too much at this point. I mean, sure, there's still a slight gold advantage for Siege Antis, but that's also uh, some of the CS differential really in mid lane. It's also on a warrior enchant. That gold has been turned into a warrior enchant, yeah. which is not something that's going to scale very hard. It has to snowball now while it's still powerful before people get too tanky. So the mid lane CS advantage should start to um, at least stabilize as Kuro has the blue buff and Coco does not. Well, Kuro shouldn't last too much longer. Might be over by now already, actually. Yeah, it's already gone, so. He just was able to stabilize for now. We'll see if he can finish up his items pretty soon to continue staying in that lane safely. That's pretty, that's pretty good CS lead, though. Over 20 now. It has been slowly growing since that six-minute mark where yeah. it was at 15. He's going to be feeling pretty good about where he is. And both players heading over to the Raptors. Nakuro making his way back into that mid lane. Yeah, so Kuro's still taking some harassment, just trying to stabilize with the biscuits. Wants to not lose out on too much farm, even if that means he has to buy a biscuit or two extra. And getting his own put down onto Coco. Now, Coco doesn't have any more biscuits to work with. He only has that cleanse and flash. And we do have Gorilla here. Not, you know, he doesn't have his ult, though. And here we go. Wisdom coming in. He has his ult. He's going to freeze Coco. There's the cleanse and the flash. The lantern comes in. But that's a big win, and the teleport actually finishing from Shy. Do they actually want to just go in on this? Ambition's here, he has his ultimate, and there's the knockback, but there's a flash forward by Gorilla to block the hook, and he's just gonna sacrifice himself, giving Smep time to come in. There's the Empress Divide, but Space is here first. Kuro has no mana, he's got the flash forward, but Ambition gets the kill on the follow through. Coco actually picks it up with the poison sack. They're gonna have to keep Smep down as Space gets that last hit, and this is a disaster for Koo Tigers as they lose three members, and the mid lane now pushing up by four members of CJ Entis. I love that decision from CJ. So they just used the Sejuani ultimate right there. They're in a power spike because if we look at the items, Wisdom actually went for a Sight Stone before completing a jungle item. So he's not really doing any Cinder Hulk or AoE damage in these team fights. Ambition has the Warrior Enchant. Critical ultimate down from Wisdom. Turn it around. Coco still has Petrifying Gaze. He used his summoners instead of the Petrifying Gaze. So when he goes back in, he can still land that ultimate. And he's still doing a lot of damage. So the turnaround on that, absolutely fine. Lee Sin is super strong right now. Just go for that burst damage. And Kuro really pays for it because of how much damage he takes from Ambition. Yeah, he just dies. Wisdom just useless yeah. as soon as that ultimate's down. So, great turn from also, CJ. Also, no depth charge. The Gorilla flashing forward just to sacrifice himself, but then Smeb come into the fight as well as they see their teammates still maybe having a chance. It was kind of bad decision to afterwards from the Koo Tigers. Even, you know, if they just let Gorilla die and backed out, I think that would have been okay. Smeb yep. could have had the teleport advantage. Wisdom was really useless right there. Uh, if you, It's one of those things. He made a decision. My decision is, I'm getting Ranger's Trailblazer, I'm going to be farming, and I want Vision now. I, those are not very many combat stats that he has to work with. Well, Ambition is just loaded up with combat, combat stats and combat items. Can't fight that. And here's 
blue buff invade for now by Siege Antis, but they don't want to make too many risks. They learned their lesson. They got the advantage. Four kills to zero. A nearly 2k advantage. Also, the other major part of it was Space got there before Frey. Yes, that was With huge, his ultimate as well. So it was just good communication from CJ to know that they could turn that around and that everyone was going to be showing up. Yeah. I mean, just overall well played by CJ Entis. Now Shy with three assists. Has the MR stats he needs. Has the health region leading forward to that um, Righteous Glory later on, but the health region is going to matter a lot, especially for both of these items, actually. The Spectre's Cowl also some region whenever you get hit. So he's not going to be pushed out by that aggressive rumble any longer. Let's take some poke, but he'll be able to stabilize. Although, you know, nice stats from the rumble going for the heavy penetration early. Let's see how it pays off later on. Now, Ambition on the bottom side of the map as we're launching this duel in the top lane. Not gonna find anything, but no wards around the Dragon Pit from the Kuta. It's just this one leading in from the mid lane, and Smep takes quite a bit of damage as Shy goes in for the clear and the trade. And Ambition this time safely going for the solo Dragon. Madlife just clearing vision around the Dragon Pit, pretending like nothing else is happening. Uh, Kuta is kind of suspected, I think, with the pings and Madlife aggressively roaming about. But it still goes over to CJ Entis, the quiet first dragon stack. Now Shy, no summoners. We do have Wisdom showing up in the top lane. He has his ultimate. Coco showing up at the blue buff. He's going to see Wisdom and Kuro. But it looks like Kuro should be able to finish this just fine, or at least, you know, Wisdom. Oh, he doesn't have Smite, though, so they're going to actually back out as Ambition oh, shows up. Oh, that's actually huge. They wanted to take something for that dragon. Oh, wow. And without the Smite. They can't actually lock it up, and not only that, but Coco gets it in the end, so... Yeah, free leash for Coco, and now Ambition is there for the top lane. They don't have a gank there. Uh, Ku Tiger's back on, you know, they're on their back foot once again. Interesting build from Space. He's gone for Bloodthirster first, which is something we almost never see on to Sivir, but I think he just wants to play more aggressively against this Corky. Uh, with that shield and the sustain to make sure that Corky isn't going to be able to quite so easily siege down some of these turrets. Because you can take a few All rocket right. shots right there if you want to. It is going to make him less powerful in the late game, at least until he gets thir three or four items, when he can finally get that Infinity Edge. Uh, but for now, it'll hold his towers up. Yeah, it'll do the job. Uh, of course, Coco with the earlier fight also should be able to scale just fine into his position. So, And again, into the mid-game, it's going to be Ambition who's putting out a lot of that damage, too. You see right there, it just really helps out space in terms of yeah. more aggressively positioning himself to farm on the minion wave. Otherwise, he would be taking a lot of damage. His shield already back up right now. He could just position himself in a way where it doesn't matter if a rocket hits him or not. I and think that's th quite wise. It, it, it's interesting. Uh, again, you get into a team fight situation, that's not going to be very helpful for you. But it's good. It's good for prolonging a laning phase and preventing Corky from sieging. All right, so Wisdom trying to go for a lane gank with the minions in Chief Ward. And again, this also means that they're constantly at least halfway through. Wisdom can't sneak into that brush, can't find that gank. Meanwhile, Shy just going in aggressively onto Smeb. Again, he knows he has all these defense stats, has the Merc Dreads too now. So he can trade evenly while clearing just fine and holding on to his own CS lead at this point. Yeah, good space. Just there for the wave clear right now. Mad Life wants to get some more wards in. Yeah, he's scared though. He knows he's alone, and Coco can't exactly help him too well. I mean, he has both summoners, but that's about uh -oh. it. Wisdom they know is right where there. Ambition is. They saw him, I think, on the top side. So Ambition going to wrap around. They definitely know that he's heading down towards Mad Life at the moment, joining up with Mad Life to try and get some vision control. There's and Gorilla. They go on to Gorilla, but here comes Wisdom and the double glacial prison, the depth charge onto Ambition. Ambition gets drawn back, and Emperor's Divide might actually save Ambition. There's the Equalizer, it doesn't hit, and the Petrifying Gaze comes in onto Gorilla. Shy's all the way up front, and there's the on the hunt from Spacey. Flashes forward, he wants those kills. They're just lined up for him. Kuro, meanwhile, gets caught by Mad Life. Mad Life all alone here, though, as Ambition shows up. Coco should be able to get that double kill. Ambition also going with the safeguard. Shy, does he have one more charge? No, it's not going to be too safe under that tower, but wow, the Ku Tigers not able to pick up the kill onto Ambition, used all their ultimates.
that now was going to be a tower. That was actually really set up, well set up by the Tigers. Yes, yeah. CJ Enzis won that, but they were tracking Ambition's movement and baiting him into that because they knew that the goal of CJ was to get wards into the river right there, that they had that control. And they set it up beautifully, and they were so close to getting two kills right off yeah. the bat of that fight. And had those two kills gone down, who wins this fight 100%? So if we take a look right here, there's the engagement. Ambition gets knocked around very aggressively. Kuro does a great job of clogging the choke, and then so close to getting those couple of kills. Shy holds him off in the meantime, but Space arrives. And then as this fight goes on, Madlife's able to zone out Kuro right here. That's so effective. If Madlife had died, that Equalizer and Ember's Divide combo had been a little bit more on point. Wow. That fight goes real differently, I think. Yeah, also, you know, watching the replay, Gorilla and Wisdom stacking their ultimates right on top of each other. Yeah, I think Gorilla could either. have actually waited for the depth charge. And uh, that's that's a mistake you shouldn't make, too, because you know that's coming, and you have time to talk with your teammate and say, yeah. who's going to ult right here? Yeah, I mean, Wisdom, I mean, there was no reason for Wisdom to miss his ult either, so Gorilla shouldn't have been too scared of that. But either way, at the end of the day, CJ also, I mean, Shy teleporting in really quickly. That also mattered yep. quite a bit. Blocking it up after, you know, the follow-up from the Petrifying Gaze. And Space again joining very soon after with On the Hunt. And that is a 7-0 kill score now. And look at this, just walking through the ward. They don't care. It's three versus five or four as Madlife just walks in, gets the hook onto Prey. The Dev Charge and the Glacial Prison on the two people, but Prey's not there for the damage. It's going to be one kill for Coco, one kill for Space, another one for Space. That one actually goes to Ambition. Everyone just being friends because sharing is carrying on CJ Yentis as they lead into a 10-0 kill score. And great dive. They love, why I like watching CJ play this Lee Sin so much is that they make it look good. They play it as aggressively as you should. You have to make plays, you have to snowball with it, and that's exactly what they're doing. Even though that Glacial Prison is up again, Ambition really makes a good play in that team fight, and Madlife locking down Prey under the turret, dealing with that major threat, and now they get one turret, they're probably gonna get number two. Yeah, well, at the very least, Kuro's oh. going to be in danger. And Empress divide backwards just to escape. That was well done by Kuro, getting Coco also caught up in the kind of backswing of that Empress divide. Yeah, he's also lucky that Shy wasn't down there to cut him off a little bit more. That could have been set up better by CJ. But they're going to get the top lane turret regardless, so that's a bigger win, I suppose, in the end. Yeah. I mean, they had the tier one in mid, so the kill would have just been the cherry on top for CJ Entis. Coco gets flashed a little bit by the Sand Soldiers, but he knows he's in such a good spot, he actually just marches forward to get that CS. Knows Kuro actually has to back out. Coco also having both of his summers though, so that's pretty good news. And Kuro using that turret for the vision before the minions waves come in. So it's a little early to defend the lane, but he'll have it there if the lane pushes up too. So a little extra stat from the turret with the true vision. Yeah, only one Dragon Sack already. I mean, it's 21 minutes in this game. Ambition finally starting to work on number two, but this has not been a very Dragon-centric game. And this is smart. Uh, you don't want it to be a very Dragon-centric game. <laughs> you have this lease in, you need to get kills and dive towers, and that's exactly what they're doing. All right. Well, the top lane now, the focus for the Koo Tigers, they lost their towers everywhere else, so they're just gonna march forward into the top lane. Is Shy the only one there, so CJ Antis will say, all right, we'll give it up. That's fine for now. Uh, Space and Coco are farming up a storm. They're gonna try and kill Kuro again. And, all right, so Kuro just gonna dodge out of it. That's gonna give them time to get rid of this turret here in tier uh, They one. trade a tier one for a tier two, though. Big minion wave picked up by Space. And finally, after that earlier siege, put, put some nice damage down onto it. They finish off that objective. And an 8,000 gold lead, 10 to 0 in terms of kills. The only thing preventing this from being a perfect game for CJ is that one tower kill that Spev finally <laughs> managed to get on the top side. And Coco picking up the blue with the poison. So Void Staff done for Smep this time. And when there's already an Abyssal and a Cowl down, that's going to have some value, especially now that the Aegis is done. Yes. For a lot of upfront burst. Makes a little bit more sense. Uh, but that only matters if he can actually 
put down his skills for the damage rather than, you know, making an escape route or even just getting killed up front. So him, you know, Smeb and his teleports are really going to matter a lot now because if the Equalizer is not there first for the upfront damage, it's not going to matter that he got those battle stats. Yeah, also, the Age is such a huge power spike against Ku. As you mentioned at the start of this game, overwhelming AP damage on yeah. this composition. Uh, only praise auto attacks, and he doesn't want to use those right now because he's just going to get killed. He's going to either get insect. Oh. oh. He's going to get insect back into the fight if he gets in that range, or petrifying gaze, or just run all over with Sivirolt and uh, twisted advance. So he needs to poke, and that. Oh well, ambition's going to get caught first. There's the lantern, though, right as the glacial prison oh, hits. Oh, that's that's rough too. That's a huge ultimate down, CJ. Not going to look for the fight right now. Shy in the bottom lane, just pushing slowly forward. Ambition doesn't want to recall just yet. Now he will. Yeah, just looking to see if they can get one more catch on to Prey, but not going to give that window as Coco clears out Vision. Of course, talked about him earlier. A celebrity here in Korea after winning one of the seasons of a music audition program. Yeah, that's uh, Kelly Clarkson will be here next week. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that she's enjoying League of Legends these days. <laughs> now, Smeb still just trying to shove out. I mean, the Spirit Visage there for Shy. So, yeah, the, the Void Staff has more value then, but Shy has so much sustain. So, Shy's just fine, split pushing against that. Maokai has that passive, so he's not too concerned. Well, Wisdom clearing out what pink wards he can, but that doesn't take care of really the vision invasion from CJ Entis. Wow, Space with a really low damage Sivir build. Static Shiv afterwards, so not even going into Phantom Dancer. He's basically, uh, you know, it's funny, I was talking with some of the EU AD carries, and whenever they play Sivir, they just call themselves Scuttle Crab. They refer to themselves as Scuttle Crab <laughs> because they think their job is to give. Movement and vision. <laughs> That's really good. So it's quite with, true. So when the EU80 carries refer to each other like, yeah, I had to play Scuttle Crab today, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that is golden. But this is this is like the most Scuttle Crab build you can have. So I stayed alive longer with my Bloodthirster yeah. so that I gave more movement and vision. Well, it's getting the job done for the rest of the team for sure. Shout out to Freeze for the hilarious story. <laughs> So the Koo Tiger still just trying to get some vision back, and they do this time around, but there are some much deeper wards that they need to take care of. And meanwhile, Smep taking a lot of damage from Shy. There's the Righteous Glory, and Shy just marching forward. Pops his ultimate to force Smep back all the way to his tower. Mission. Just clearing wards. Now, CJ hasn't really been able to do too much, though, since the last fight. Now, Dragon up in a minute 20, they'll be guaranteed to get something done then, either a third Dragon stack or a fight. But do they want to try to make something happen before there is this red buff? And it looks like they'll just have to give that one up. Mad Life just getting a hook onto Gorilla. Oh, he actually goes in and flashes forward with the box. He's going to take a lot of damage. Goes out first, but the Petrified Gaze coming in, and there's the flank from Shy. He goes onto Kuro. Kuro not going to die just yet. He flashes forward for the kill. Meanwhile, Coco gets a kill onto Gorilla. Two men down, and Mission charges all the way forward. Gets the kick just to slow Smeb down a little bit. Smeb trying to get hungry for the kill, but there's Shy. There's Coco as Wisdom charges forward to block off the damage from Coco. Coco might die here. He's dangerous, but there's the safeguard for Ambition. Ambition is flying all over the fight as Shy continues to refuse to die. Picks up a double kill for himself. There's the flash and the chilling <laughs> spite, and he's gonna follow through on this. I can Righteous just feel glory. it. Righteous glory. Oh, it runs out, but Shy's gonna go ahead and pick that one up for the <laughs> ace against the Koo Tigers. Shy is so good at team fighting. Holy cow! Wow. But ambition. That was that was a bit bold of CJ to fight <laughs> in a choke like that against an Azir, a Rumble, and a Sejuani. They made it work, but. It, it was kind of <laughs> ugly. I, I thought Mad Love was crazy. I mean, he had four people there. Look at this. He just says, all right, I'm going in, guys. Gets the two-man play. Gets the of boss. Course, and just instant a zero wall right there. And I, there's no way you can get over that right now. And Shy space is all the with way a up. really good flank right there. Space actually just, like, flashes <laughs> into that and starts autoing everybody with his zero damage Sivir build. 
He forgot he was Scuttle Crab. <laughs> He's not going to kill anybody doing that. <laughs> and there we go. There's a, we have Bray trying to get some angles on Coco. Nearly takes him out. They start to get worried, but that oh, shield man. barely saving Coco. Meanwhile, another kill for Coco after CJ gets their third Dragon stack. I mean, yeah, it was messy, but they got the ace, and they're just running away with this game at this point against the Koo Tigers. So it's the CJ, it's the CJ way of playing a best of three, Chobra. You have to see, <laughs> you have to get totally rocked one game, and then one game has to be nail-bitingly close, and then the other game they rock the other team. Shy just goes forward. He wants to chase it right now. And Ambition has a lot of damage. That's there's the Empress of Ident, the Equalizer, and the Glacial Prison, just to make sure they really don't cross that line. And CJ Antis will be happy because that's what they wanted. They wanted to push everyone back, get that tier two, and space just. Poking away at the tower, he takes some damage though, so he has to back off. But no equalizer, no glacial prison to chase after the CJ and his team. I'm trying to set up for a pick right here, but they're standing in a ward, so that's not going to be a thing that happens. Yep, Coco and Ember are just going to back out, and they put down their own vision on the retreat. They don't want to give up a free counter baron here, so they'll go in and take the scuttle crab too. Someone's got to finish that one. The cannibalism. <laughs> the scuttle crab killing the scuttle crab. And I thought that the tigers were the one with the, trying to beat crabs. <laughs> Their new uniforms. I, I like it. It's very summer festive. But you, it's not really doing them. Do you think about do you think about crabs? Do you think about summertime, Chobra? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, you go to the beach, get bitten by a crab, never go back again. <laughs> I don't think crabs bite you. Just just putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> they bite you with their mouths, and the claws are actually just, <laughs> it's just a trick. <laughs> so, seeing some pings go down in the mid lane, CJ and just staying grouped all throughout at this point. They can really team fight well. You know, thinking back to what you mentioned earlier, maybe that's why Shy doesn't play too much solo queue. They need someone who's really true to the team fight meta. <laughs> he can't get taken away with all the carry top layers in solo queue. That's right. Team, team fighting only. Yeah. <laughs> so now CJ enters all the way at the top. They're in a no rush, and they're looking at the flank here. There's a Righteous Glory, and Kuro gets caught. Emperor's Divine use, and that's fine. Wisdom charges over to try to catch Ambition. Not going to matter, though. Glacial Prison, but no angle. So Wisdom just backs out. There's a tier two. CJ is playing this very methodically. Not going too crazy after that last fight either. No, just go ahead, force the ults. You traded a Zir wall for Righteous Glory. That's oh wisdom. Walked right into the sapling, into the box, the double petrifying gaze, and shy up front, denying all the damage from Trey. A double kill for Coco. The equalizer just to deny the advance and the sand soldier. And CJ still wanted that kill, but they're gonna look and say, okay, all right, we'll back off. Ambition also gets caught by Smep. And that should be a Baron then for CJ Antis at this point. There we go, Mad Life over the wall into the Baron pit. We'll start working away on that one. Have that Cassiopeia for the massive amounts of DPS. And they will go ahead and extend their lead. 13,000 gold in 31 minutes. Wow. And they should be ending this. What happened there? I, I don't know. I don't know why Coco's recall was. I think he canceled in the or maybe he got hit by like one last tick from Baron, but he was very delayed on that one. Eight zero oh, and seven though for that guy. Rye lies on him too. I mean, no one's escaping this Cassiopeia at this point. Doesn't need the Zonias because he's got so much peel. He has that Saris Grace. Has a locket too from Ambition. Well, Empress of uh, used again as Kuro gets caught. I mean, he's constantly having to use his ultimate just for escapes. And Coco has the flash. Oh, the flash follow-up from Kuro. Everyone following <laughs> their flashes for this one wow. kill. They used three flashes <laughs> to not even hit Kuro with anything. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Uh, well, they can afford that at this point, I guess. Shy getting hit by... Uh, the Arctic Assault, and there's Equalizer, but Coco doesn't care. Depth Charge might matter a little bit, though, as Shy gets it up, and Ambition kicks Smep back from the damage, and Ambition goes in to help get the kill for Shy as Prey just explodes on that ultimate from Maokai. Ambition jumping in once again. Doesn't have that Dragon Inspiration, so he just stands there for a second. And CJ and just the rest of the team groups up to charge forward. The inhibitor going down in mid. 15 seconds left until Wisdom comes out, but CJ Antis has that Baron buff, so their minions are going to do a lot of damage onto these 
Nexus Towers, and it looks like CJ Inter should be able to secure this game three. As the Tigers, yeah, I mean, Kuro doesn't really have an answer for this either. No, em oh, the Ember Spider is up, but he, yeah, he just uses it as the Nexus goes down. And CJ Yentis wins 2-1 yet again. As some chuckling from Shy right there at the end. <laughs> Coach Sutton coming into the booth, congratulating his players. And well played by everyone in that last game. Healthy amounts of face slapping <laughs> <laughs> for encouragement. Matt Life looking a bit tired after that one, but well done by CJ Yentis. And I'm glad to see Ambition playing Lee Sin because it wouldn't be yeah. Korean League of Legends without some crazy Lee Sin exactly. mechanics. And he definitely did a good job that game. A tough loss for the Tigers, but they played so much better tonight than they have at any other point during the season. Yeah, yes. they got they got rocked in that last game, <laughs> but game one and two, they really did play very well. So that's an encouraging sign for them because they have a lot of circuit points.